Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us in this afternoon's program. We are very excited to launch the 2021 edition of Civil Procedure, a Guide for the Bench and the Bar Book 3 by our beloved Rex author, Dean Ferdinand A. Tan. Let us open the prayer. Let us open the program with a prayer. We would like to enjoin everyone to be in the presence of your Almighty Father for our opening prayer to be followed shortly by the singing of our national anthem. In respectful presence of our brothers and sisters across boundaries and faiths, let us all join in prayer and worship and gratitude and for guidance. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for the gift of life and all its joys. We thank you for today, for all its challenges, in all its splendor. We thank you for the gift of one another. O God of infinite mercy and wisdom, only in unity with your will can all our toils have true meaning. Transform us into willing and able stewards of this world and its future. Bring us together to work with understanding and compassion. As we toil and grow weary, we pray for renewed strength and resolve. As we experience pain and sorrow, let us be reminded of untold good beyond. As we see pain and suffering, let us be instruments of your peace and extensions of your loving and healing hands. As we gather here today, bless us all that our collective knowledge be tempered and guided by your wisdom. Grant us clarity of vision to see the common good amidst all distractions. Endow us with humility and purity of heart to transcend all differences and reservations. When we leave this gathering, let us be the change we seek. As we endeavor to practice what we learn, let us be the good we want to see in others. As we work for our learners and their future, let it be that your will be done. In solemn silence, let us conclude with our own personal prayer. Sang Awit ng Pilipinas. everyone. Before we get to the exciting parts of the program, we would like to inform that we have arranged an online raffle. Our dear viewers, you have a chance to win a copy of this book. Just register now on the link pinned in the comments to be included in our live draw later. If you're the lucky winner, comment present on the comment section within 30 seconds after we announce your name. 
Please take note that the raffle winner who's not able to come in present within the allotted time will be disqualified and the team will draw another winner. Announcement of one raffle winner will be done later before we end this program. So make sure to stay with us all throughout the program. Good afternoon once again, our dear partners in learning. 2021 is a big year for Rex and we're happy to be able to share this milestone with you as we continue to serve you as the new Bigger and Better Rex Education. From the mid-20th century, during a time of challenges and hopeful rebuilding, from an alliance of shared passion, Rex was born, persevering through decades, sustained by faith, emboldened by vision. Rex has become a tradition of service to the nation. With its first publications, Rex pledged itself to a more proactive role in education. As evolving education required new tools and services, so did Rex expand. In the dawn of the 21st century, when education is demanded to foster learning in all forms, learning within and beyond the walls of institutions, for sustaining today for the future. We are championing education. We are now Rex Education. To tell us more about Rex Education and to officially open today's event, let us hear from Rex Education's Chief External Affairs Officer, Ms. Danda Primalda I. Buhan. Good afternoon, and welcome everyone to today's learning-packed book launch and lecture. As we count down to the bar exams, it is with great pride that we present another stellar legal material that will hopefully guide our future lawyers into securing that future of service and integrity. This new book, of course, comes from Rex Education, a brand, a community, an advocacy, a tradition of service, dedicated to inspiring every Filipino lifelong learner to advance themselves and uplift others. With 70 years of service and dedication to education, we have evolved from that iconic bookstore that we all know to something bigger and more significant from just providing learners with published educational materials. We are now accompanying everyone throughout their lifelong journey, learning in all forms, beyond the walls of institutions, learning for the light, enlightenment, and fulfillment. And true to our tradition of service, Rex Education is guided by the Educampion philosophy, which seeks to rally and empower education duty bearers. We believe that all of us are Educampions. Champions for education, we're all working with the best interests of the Filipino whole learner in mind. As Rex Education, our mission is to empower all duty bearers in the field of education to champion education no matter what circumstances are. It is through and because of this that we are excited to spend the next two hours with you as we come together to unveil our most updated offering for the Philippine legal community. Friends and partners in education, may I present to you Civil Procedure a Guide for the Bench and the Bar, Book 3. Presented both as a textbook and reference material, this is a companion for students of law, bar takers, and even law practitioners and members of the bench who need to refresh their memory on the rules on criminal procedure, rules on cybercrime, warrants, the 2020 revised rules on intellectual property rights, the continuous trial rule, the 2019 proposed rules of evidence, and data privacy act. 
to make it even easier and more comprehensive read for students and practitioners of law, we have included the latest jurisprudence, various case laws applicable in every provision of the rules, and related rules and regulations promulgated by the Supreme Court, presented and discussed in a question and answer format. Today I have the honor to present the author of Civil Procedure, A Guide for the Bench and the Bar. He is the President and Managing Director of Academicus Review Center Incorporated, a member of the Committee on Remedial Law Bar Examinations at the University of the Philippines Law Center, and a professional lecturer in top law schools across the country. He is also the former Commissioner of the Commission on Integrity and Bar Discipline, and former Dean of San Sebastian, Recoletos Manila College of Law. Truly an expert on remedial law, civil and criminal procedure, law and ethics, our author has been most gracious to join us today for an enlightening session and lecture. Without further ado, everyone, join me in welcoming our partner in championing legal education, Dean Ferdinand A. Tan. Uh, good afternoon to each and everyone, and thank you very much for a wonderful introduction. Marami pong salamat sa inyo. I was given the privilege uh, to uh, discuss something about the book together with the, uh, the book lunch, as well as the book lunch, rather, which is being hosted by uh, Rex Bookstore, the uh, premier and the number one law bookstore in the country. So let me take your time. Oh, for uh, less than one hour to discuss with you the mechanics, the contents, as far as the book is concerned. No? So the question that you may be asked, you may be asking, what benefit can I have regarding this book? Now, for those who are preparing for the bar, for those who are undergraduate in the College of Law, even for those who are practicing their professions and even judges, these are this book is their guide and material which is being used in order to help them or assist them in their respective um, undertakings or jobs or profession. No? So what make or what makes this the uh, this uh, book different from other law books, which has the same topic or topics and the same codal provisions? Now, if you're going to uh, browse the contents of the book, as I have mentioned by our good, uh, uh, by the Rex, by, by Rex Bookstore, it is in the form of a question and answer format. So what are the contents? So we have the, uh, what they call this, the codal provisions regarding the, the rules of court, especially the 1997 rules on civil procedure. Take note that there are already main two main rules of procedure that governs civil actions. The first one is the 1997 rules on civil procedure, and then the other one is the 2019 rules on civil procedure, amending the provisions under sections rule six up to rule 35 of the old rules. So what are the rules that is covered by the two rules? No? The first one is the 1997 rules on civil procedure. That governs what? That is governing rule one to five and then 36 to 71. Okay, while the rules on the new rules, the 2019 rules on civil procedure, eh, are governs what? Rules 36, rules six, or rule six up to rule 35. So you may ask also, what is the effect of the amendment regarding the 1997 rules on civil procedure? Uh, impliedly amended the provision or some of the provisions regarding the old rules, the 1997 rules on civil procedure. Like what I have mentioned earlier, there is a, uh, what you call uh, a question and answer uh, format, you no? Know? which is in consonance with the provision of the codal, the, uh, the rules of court. Each and every codal provision is given or mentioned in the book together with the question and answers and supporting case law. 
So if you are reading the book, it is easily, you can easily comprehend what is being discussed in each and every provision mentioned under 62 to 71. Inclusive also are the discussions regarding writ of Kalikasan and writ of continuing mandamus, no? because uh, several bar questions has already been asked no? regarding the uh, special rules on environmental cases respect, uh, relating to writ of Kalikasan and writ of continuing mandamus. Also discussed in the book is the new provision of Republic Act 11.576, no? that is an act further expanding the jurisdiction of the Metropolitan Municipal Municipal Circuit Trial Courts. Okay, so what is the importance or what is the relation of this Republic Act 11.576 with respect to the rules on, on civil special civil actions? No, now if you go over the provision amended is or are the provisions under section 19 and section 33 regarding the exclusive original jurisdiction of the regional trial court under section 19, or, uh, section 19 and under section 33 the uh, jurisdiction of the metropolitan municipal and municipal circuit trial courts you no know? and this is already incorporated in the book you no know, regarding the jurisdiction of various courts I'll give you an example, for example, interpleader. So if you talk of interpleader, that is a uh, special civil action you know, filed before the court, whereby the person in possession of either real or personal property having no legal interest or his interest is uncontested by the, uh, the parties may file a complaint for interpleader. Now the question will be, which court will you file the said complaint for interpreter? Okay, then na po papasok no yung tinatawag na ating Republic Act 11576. Now, if the interpreter involves real property under the old rules, you have to file it with either the regional trial court or the metropolitan municipal trial courts. What is the jurisdictional amount? Under the old rules, BP 129, that is assessed value 20,000 pesos or 50,000 pesos, if uh, exceeding, no, if that exceeds the jurisdictional amount, then you can file it before the regional trial court. Now, if it does not exceed, then therefore the MTC or MCTC has jurisdiction over the said action. But now, with the advent of the uh, provision under Republic Act 11.576, for example, then it amends the provision of Section 19, Paragraph 2, no? or enumeration number 2, when the action involves Title 2, possession, or over a real property or any interest in, jurisdiction lies with what? No? Kalakalagay po doon. When the assessed value exceeds 400,000 pesos, regardless whether it is outside or within Metro Manila. So therefore, which court has jurisdiction? 400, okay? If it exceeds 400,000 pesos, that the complaint for interpreter should be filed before the, uh, uh, the regional trial court, okay? If it does not exceed, therefore, you should file it before the metropolitan or municipal trial courts, no? So also, if what is involved is a personal property, the provision under the paragraph 8, no, of uh, Section 19, that has already been amended also under the old, uh, old law on uh, BP-129, making the jurisdictional amount as 2 million pesos regardless of whether it is outside or within Metro Manila. So if, for example, you are talking about interpreter for involving what? Involving uh, personal property, then you have to consult the provision under... Uh, the provision under Republic Act 11576. So where will you file the action for interpreter involving personal property? And therefore that falls either within the jurisdiction of the regional trial court or the municipal, municipal circuit trial courts or metropolitan trial court. If the value of the property okay, exceeds 2 million pesos, that falls under within the jurisdiction of the regional trial court. 
or if does not exceed, therefore, it is falling within the jurisdiction of the municipal, metropolitan, or municipal circuit trial courts. So these are the new rule law no? regarding jurisdiction in connection with uh, uh, special civil actions. Now, if you deal with foreclosure proceeding also under Rule 68 of uh, the, new, the 1997 rules on civil procedure, so therefore the jurisdictional amount, of course, in case of for, foreclosure of real estate mortgage, that involves what? No, it involves it is an action involving uh, interest of the mortgagor, mortgagee rather, over the mortgage property by the mortgagor. So therefore, if that involves interest, therefore it falls. It is uh, the jurisdiction. Uh, the ju jurisdiction lies either with the uh, regional trial court or metropolitan municipal circuit trial courts. So, which court will you file the complaint for foreclosure of real estate mortgage? If it exceeds two million of uh, four hundred, no, four hundred thousand pesos, that therefore regional trial court has jurisdiction over the action for foreclosure of real estate mortgage. Otherwise, if it is not, does not exceed, therefore it falls under the jurisdiction of the metropolitan or municipal trial courts. So, ito po yung mga bago no dapat dating malaman, and that is for the benefit of ho all who are listening right now, especially students, uh, bar reviewers and uh, practicing lawyers together with judges. Alam na naman ng mga judges yan, of course. Now also, if you talk, take, uh, take note of the provision under Rule 69, no? and that is partition. This is just an example of the innovations, which is now incorporated under Book 3 of my book. No? Partition is uh, capable of pecuniary estimation. Now, if you talk about partition of a real property, therefore, again, that involves 400 outside, oh no, 400 if it exceeds, therefore, assess value. No, if it exceeds, therefore, that is RTC. If not, therefore, it falls under either, uh, it falls under the MTC or MCTC. But if it is personal properties in an action for partition, if you take note, you may ask, is Rule 69 applicable in case of partition of personal properties? Yes, because if you read the provision under Section 13 of Rule 69, therefore, the provision under Rule 69 shall be applicable in case of partition of personal estate or properties. And therefore, the amount involved is 2 million pesos. So these are the new innovations. Now you also may ask, ano, uh, what, will be, what is the effect of the 2019 rules on civil procedure with respect to the rules on special civil actions? You may ask. Now, take for example under Section 4 of Rule uh, 62 filing of a motion to dismiss. Under the old rules on 1997, Rules of Civil Procedure, there are two grounds which you can use for purposes of uh, filing a motion to dismiss. Okay? Therefore, that is provided for under Section 4 of Rule 62. And that is what? These are uh, when there is uh, impropriety in the filing of the complaint for interpleader or any of the grounds mentioned under Rule 16. No? If you look back, before the amendment of the uh, 1997 Rules of Civil Procedure, there are 10 grounds mentioned under Rule 16. But with the advent of the, uh, the amendment of the 2019 uh, Rules on Civil Procedure, you can see that wala na po yung Rule 16, the provisions was transposed to other, no, to other provisions. Take, for example, the motion to dismiss, you can find it now under Section 12 of Rule 15. So it is already under Rule 15. And if you take note of Rule 15 of Section 12, as a general rule, a motion to dismiss is a prohibited motion. And therefore, there are only four grounds mentioned. And that is lack of jurisdiction over the subject matter of the case. Okay, The second one is litis pendencia barred by prior judgment or uh, prescription or by, barred by statute of limitations. So what is the effect now of the new rule? No, Section 12 of Rule 15 with respect to Section 4 of Rule 62. Therefore, it amends the provision. No, Partially amended is the provision of Section 4. Now, if you are intending to file a, mo a, uh, a motion to dismiss against a complaint for interpleader, 
you do you now use section 12 of rule 15 based only on four grounds plus the impropriety so these are the effects also when you talk about what when you talk about uh, the computation of time no okay calendar days na po ang ginagamit ngayon. So what is the effect of Rule 22 with respect to the other uh, rules of procedure in civil actions? It impliedly amended the provision under the old rules. No, If you uh, will compute the time, for example, of filing an appeal under Rule 40, 41, 42, 43, and 45, no? nakalagay po doon 15 days. But what is the effect now of Rule 22 with respect to the computation of time? You have to base this based on calendar days. It is either 15 days, general rule, by way of notice of appeal in ordinary appeals as provided for under 40 or 41, or by way of 15 calendar days. Okay, hindi na po 15 days lang. 15 calendar days. Okay, now we have also those uh, appeals, by, appeals by way of uh, record and appeal. So what is the period or what is the word that you're going to use? 30 calendar days. 15 or 30 calendar, calendar days from when? From the time you receive the judgment or final order, which is the subject of the appeal, or from the time of the receipt of the order denying your motion for reconsideration. So Rule 22 somehow amends the provision under the rules on appeals, 40, 41, 42, 43, and 45. If you talk about 45, and that is 15 days. If, for example, you are talking about petition for review to the uh, Court of Appeals for judgment, final orders, or awards of a quasi-judicial body performing quasi-judicial functions, then you have to use the word 15 calendar days, observing the fresh period rule under 40, 41, 42, 43, and 45. So yun na po ang ngayong uh, ginagamit. So why, when to file a, for example, an answer to uh, a, an interpreter, nakalagay po doon 15 days from service of summons. So again, what is the uh, what is the effect of the uh, Rule 22 with respect to the filing of the answer to the complaint for interpreter? No? That is 15 calendar days from, from, yeah service of summons under Rule 14. Okay? Now also, if you take note, marami pong binago dyan, no? Uh, karamihan po, the bulk under Rule 18, no? Rule 18, meron na pong tinatawag na uh, the court may already consider that the case be subject of a motion for judgment of the pleadings or summary judgment. Yeah. So, magkakaroon po ba ng application ng ganon? Yung Section 10 during pre-trial, for example, in uh, action for foreclosure of real estate mortgage? The answer is yes. Okay, it may be referred also to the uh, to the Mediation and Conciliation Board for purposes of amicable settlement. It may consider if, for example, the answer in a complaint for inter, uh, foreclosure of real estate mortgage does not tender an issue. Therefore, the plaintiff may simply file what we call motion for judgment of the pleadings under Rule 34. Or if the answer filed by the uh, defending party in an action for foreclosure of real estate mortgage, no, based on the affidavits, deposition, or uh, admissions or affidavits, no, it does it does not present a genuine issue. Therefore, even during pre-trial, no, the court may already consider the case or submitted for summary judgment under Rule 35. Okay, so ito po yung mga innovations. What is also uh, unique about this book, no, is that there are correlations from one provisions to the other. Take for example, if you talk about uh, provisional uh, uh, remedies, as we all know, provisional remedies are interlocutory orders and therefore cannot be the subject of appeal under Section 1 of Rule 41, second paragraph, enumeration letter B. No? Nakalagay na din po sa book. What will be your possible remedy in the form of a question, in the form of an answer? No? And therefore, there is always a legal, procedural, or substantive or constitutional basis for each and every question. Okay? Ano ang constitutional basis? Ano ang 
what is the procedural basis regarding the exercise, for example, of the Supreme Court in granting uh, uh, provisional remedies. You can find it under Section 1 of Rule 45. Okay. Now, what is the substantive basis of the exercise of uh, the grant of provisional remedies? You can find it under the provision of BP 129 as amended. No? Uh, the power to issue writs, auxiliary writs and processes. Nakalagay din po yan with respect to uh, BP 129. If, for example, the uh, the uh, Sandigan Bayan no? issues attachment, no? Or injunction. So, what would the what would be the basis of a uh, substantive basis as far as the issuance of this uh, attachment or injunctions are concerned? No, makikita niyo din po sa book yung tinatawag na Republic Act 10660, an act further strengthening uh, the jurisdiction of Sandigan Bayan and appropriating funds therefore. So, these are correlations of one provisions to the other. This is my advice. If you're going to be studying civil procedure or criminal procedure, special proceedings, or even evidence under 128 to Rule 133, you have to correlate that with other provisions of the rules, okay? So that you can have a holistic approach in understanding the rules of court by merely reading each and every or per uh, rule. No, you cannot fully understand the provision or the whole of the rules of court. Okay, that's how you're going to understand, read, analyze. No, for example, and yung rules of civil procedure po ba? Ano bang uh, uh, relations sa criminal procedure? Ano po yung relations niyan doon sa uh, special proceeding? Ano ang relation niyan doon sa tinatawag na quasi administrative proceedings? I'll give you an example. If you take note, the provision under Section 1 of Rule 127, ordinary under Section 1, the rules on ordinary civil actions shall be applied to in character, and that, per that pertains to what? Rule 62, rules 57 to 61 in civil actions. Wala po kayong makikita under Rule 127 other provisional remedies except attachment. So, saan po nanggagaling yung injunction? Saan nanggagaling yung support pendente lite? Under the rules on civil procedure, under 62 to 71. Now, if you go over the book, then nakalagay na po doon with procedural or substantive basis as the case may be. Yo, that is the beauty, no? Makikita niyo po doon. No? Alimbawa, support pendente lite, for example. Wala pong support pendente lite under 127 kasi nakalagay po doon provisional remedies. But saan mo kukunin? Where we, where, what will be your legal basis in applying for support pendente lite with respect to criminal cases? Halimbawa po, na rape, mayroong rape victim, nagkaroon ng pregnancy, na-impregnated nung kanong accused, and you want to apply for what? Uh, support pendente lite. You cannot find it under the provision of 127. You can find it under Rule 61. So again, it is also discussed and presented in the form of codal question and answers and even case law regarding the provision. So this is the beauty of, you know, the advantage of knowing the uh, uh, the provisions and the relation of other provisions. Is the rule uh, are the rules on civil procedure also applicable in special proceedings? Another question. That is a question in the bar examination. Yes, of course. Because if you read the provision under Section 2 of Rule 72, nakalagay po dun, very clear. Huh? The rules on ordinary civil action shall be applied whenever practicable and convenient. That is a bar examination question in uh, 2015. No? Nakalagay po dun. No? So, ibig sabihin po, nag apply Wha What is the meaning of whenever practicable and convenient? No? If it is capable of doing and there is no particular provision which is applicable in a given state of facts involving special proceedings. And that is the reason why the ordinary rules on civil procedure is applicable supplutory or in, in character whenever there is insufficiency or absence of provisions under special proceedings. So that is how the book is being presented every now and then. Okay? Pakikita niyo po doon, even the provision under it of Kalikasa. So what would be your remedy? How would you do it? And oh, also, you can find in the book yung tinatawag na 
forms. So what is the advantage of having the form? Ito po ginagamit una sa bar exam sa uh, your, your study regarding legal forms. Okay? This is also the subject of what? Uh, legal ethics and practical exercises. For example, you will be asked, prepare a complaint for ejectment. And this has been asked in the bar examination. Prepare a complaint for interpleader. This has been asked in the bar examination. So by merely knowing the provision without looking, yung tinatawag the virtual reality of the rules. And therefore, you cannot, you cannot prepare or answer the bar question. And that is the reason why I incorporated the forms. You know? If you are a new lawyer, for example, and you were asked by your boss, prepare, attorney X, please prepare a complaint for ejectment. And you don't have any idea what is a complaint or what are the contents of a complaint for ejectment, a lawful detainer and forcible entry. Then the answer is that you can find it in the book. And that is the reason why also those uh, new passers in the bar examination also get a copy of the book. And these are their weapon in solving their problems with respect to judicial proceedings as far as forms are concerned. Practicing lawyers, or even the, the uh, old uh, practicing lawyers, no, or senior uh, practicing lawyers, also use the book. So that is the reason why I make it to uh, may, uh, I uh, prepared or even incorporated these forms in the book, no, and that is your advantage already. So, if, for example, you are new in the law office and maybe your boss uh, asks you to prepare something, for example, petition for sexual. So, paano mo gagawin yun without looking, or if you have only the code, again, nandun po yun. Now, if you look at the provision of Rule 65 and 66, and even Rule 47, may form, forms mo doon. Also, you have to read Rule 47, 65, and 66 in relation to what? In relation to Rule 46. And it is also incorporated, nakalagay din po doon. No? For purposes of what? Filing a petition for annulment of judgment to be filed before the Court of Appeals, or filing a petition for sexuary prohibition mandamus, or filing a petition for co warrant. You have to consult the provision under Rule 46. If, for example, you're trying to appeal by way of Rule 45, by way of petition for review on sexuary to the Supreme Court, you have to read Rule 56, and that is also incorporated. No? So there is a correlation. There is a discussion on each or uh, the, uh, the provision, each and every provisions or topics in relation to other provisions of the rules or even the provision of laws. And that will be to your advantage. Bakit po nakalagay yung substantive basis? If, for example, you are going to prepare a pleading, saan mo kukunin yung basis mo for the argument, for the issues to be raised? No, do must have a legal basis, either under the law, either under the constitution or the provision of the rules of court. And that is readily available as far as the book is concerned. It is provided, it is uh, stated in a concise manner in order for the reader to have a good grasp easily by what is the, or what is the provision all about. So that is the advantage of having, you know, more or less knowing or reading the book on civil procedure. Now, tatumpung volumes yan, hinati hati po yan. That is book one, that is from rule, uh, jurisdiction, constitutional provisions, doctrines, motu proprio, dis uh, proto motu proprio orders of uh, the courts, from rule one up to rule 35, inclusive of uh, the amendments, the 2019 rules on civil procedure. Then book two deals with rule 36 up to rule uh, 61 because that is included when you talk about ordinary rules on civil procedure. And then the third book is from 57 up to 71, inclusive of ampa, uh, writ of kalikasan and writ of continuing madamos. Now, if you are a practicing lawyer engaged in the practice of environment, environmental cases, this will be helpful also to you. There is a provision, there is a correlation, there is an existing jurisprudence, there is a legal forms provided 
for you, uh, for intended to be of help to each and every one. So again, you no, know, if you are that, these are the benefits. Kasi po kapag kayo ay bumibili ng isang bagay, always ang tatanong niyo po sa sarili niyo, anong benepisyo ang makukuha ko doon sa aking bibilhin? Yan po ba ay magkakaroon ng epekto sa aking ginagawa o hindi? Now, if you find it, no, uh, helpful doon sa yung undertaking or job or employment, then go for it. No, it will help you a lot. Now, in the same way, the intention of the book is not really, it is intended to help those who are in need of understanding or a good understanding, an in-depth understanding of what the rules on civil procedure is all about. And that is the very intention, my very intention. Kaya po yan, I, and also I prepare that for also for my students. You no, know, for in preparing them for the uh, bar, for their exam bar examination. Okay, uh, I want them to be uh, to be prepared to know by heart the provision of the rules of court. Because ito po, ito po yung ina-argue natin. Once you become a lawyer, whether you like it or not, dadaanan mo po yung procedure. And if we talk about procedures, we are talking about the rules of court. If you don't have a good foundation regarding rules of court, then you are in trouble. So how can you defend somebody when you do not know the provisions of the rules of court? And that is very, uh, very, uh, what? Uh, mahirap, no? Very difficult. Kaya po, I, I, uh, when, when I started teaching, sabi ko sa akin sarili na, I'm going to prepare a book in order to help the students and my fellow brothers because I myself is a victim of a professor na hindi po ginawa yung kanyang tungkulin bilang aking professor sa Remigelo. Try to remember that before Remigelo Law is a four subjects, uh, uh, covers four subjects from civil procedure criminal procedures, special proceedings, and evidence. But again, my professor you know, was only able to discuss up to Rule 30. So what will happen to us? Or what happened to us? We are inadequate during the preparation for the bar. So what happened to, the, to Rule 31, up to Rule 134, kasi dati po 134, ngayon 133 na lang. And I, I promise myself, once I become a lawyer, I will help those who are in need to understand or need help or assistance with respect to rules on rules of court. Yun po yung aking uh, advocacy. No? And that is also the reason why yung aking pong mga estudyante ay uh, natutulungan ko one way or the other. Okay? By providing them more or less a holistic, more or less complete approach with respect to remedial law. No? Kahit po yung hindi mga, hindi ko mga estudyante, or you're those students who are coming from provinces, nag like may message po sila, and they follow the book, no? yung uh, exuances, or yung uh, ng mga bo ng books, no? Meron po tayong books sa uh, civil procedure, criminal procedure, special proceedings, and evidence. So last uh, week, I received four messages coming from Mindanao. Iligan, marami po sila. No? Uh, they are asking about uh, a copy of book three. No? Kasi yung latest ko niyan noon, is uh, yung uh, previous issuance or publication is 2017. No? So now I divided the uh, the topics, no civil procedure into three books. Eh, bakit po three books? Dati dalawa lang. Kasi meron pong reklamo yung mga estudyante ko na mahirap daw pong bitbitin. And I try to listen to their complaints. Sinasabi nila, din dapat po ganito yan. So I try to listen dun sa kanilang mga request. And that is the reason why they're always included in the book. They are part of the book itself. So again, 
maraming salamat doon sa mga tumatangkilik at uh, tumangkilik at tumatangkilik sa ating uh, publications and also especially to Rex Bookstore who are always with us no? all the way supporting us to come up with a book. No? They are one of those serving as our inspiration, especially if you're doing a book. No, marami pong publishing companies, but again, I think it is based on my assessment, and this is my opinion, Rex Bookstore is number one. There is no other book uh, uh, publishing company who can, uh, you know, papantayan yung quality of work ng Rex Bookstore. And I, I am really indebted to them, and I am very thankful to them. Thank you very much, Rex Bookstore. Once again, marami pong salamat. Kung meron po kayong uh, mga queries, especially those who are from uh, far-flung areas, Mindanao or Visayas, no, just feel free and I am more than willing to help each and every one of you. Pasagutin ko po yung mga queries nyo. Okay, with that, uh, thank you very much again to all the participants, to those who are listening right now, to Rex Bookstore. Okay, thank you very, very much. Okay, uh, Mahirap po magsalita ng uh, bubuhatin mo yung uh, sarili mo. No? Let other people do the talking, not me. Okay, with that, parting words. Okay, una, uh, tips muna, tips. If you are preparing for the bar, there are two things that you have, to, three things that you have to remember. One is the substance. Ano po yun? Okay, that is the rules of court. That is one make as much as possible a good retention of the provisions. Okay. The second one is that you should know how to answer bar questions. Ang pagsagot po sa bar examination with respect to or in relation to remedial law. And by the way, ang remedial law po is 20% in the bar. You have an answer direct to the question, answering the question directly. Second one, you must have a legal basis. The legal basis will be the rules of court, the provision of the constitution, the provision of law, and jurisprudence or principles and doctrines. And then you have to apply what you have cited as your basis. So that's how. And the third one is always pray to him. Ask for a divine intervention so that you will be guided accordingly, even up to now. Kailangan po natin ng guidance. With that, you will become successful. Also, tandaan nyo po, your goal in the bar examination, especially in remedial law, is that I have to get a grade of 90 in remedial law. Rest assured, if you get a grade of 90 and above in remedial law, you will take your oath, comes testimonial or taking of the oath, okay, after passing the bar. And that is an assurance. So I wish you all the best. I wish you all good luck. I hope I was able, one way or the other, help those who are in need. No? Nakatulong po sana ako sa inyo. And kung meron po kayong mga katanungan, I am free to answer your questions, again, to the best of my ability. Okay? Thank you very much, also, Rex Bookstore. Thank you for the very rich presentation, Dean Ferdinand Eita. We are very honored to receive such expert guidance, especially at the time when the study and practice of law have become more challenging. Rex Education, allow me to congratulate you on yet another feather in your cap with the release of this book. We look forward to learning more from you through your books and lectures. Congratulations, Dean, and here's to more years of working together as stewards of legal education. Thank you very much also. You are most welcome always. All right, just to remind everyone that we have a question and answer portion with our author, Dean Pan, at the latter part of the program. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment your questions below as we will be selecting three questions from the comments. At this point, we will now be hearing more about how the works of Dean Ferdinand A. Tan can help in paving the way of our future lawyers. Let us give a warm welcome, Torni Victor Austria, Clerk of Court, Regional Trial Court, Imos Cavite. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for that uh, wonderful uh, greeting. Uh, hi again, Dintan. I'm very, very happy to see you. Hi, Attorney Victor. 
I would like to congratulate you on uh, your new book, uh, Volume 3, Civil Procedure, A Guide to the Bench and Bar. And I would also like to thank Rex for helping us by helping Dean Dan. Uh, Dean, uh, first of all, tinamahan ako doon sa sinabi kanina ni Dean because of yung professor niya, nagkulang. Uh, buti nga kay Dean, may naalala pa siyang tinuro yung professor niya. Eh. Yung professor ko, wala. He... He actually taught us fear, nothing more. Tinakot niya lang kami. So what I did is just try to memorize the codal, but that really did not work. Well, so after that, I tried to read a lot of books sa remedial law. Uh, honestly, I was actually talking to one barrister uh, last week, and I told her na if you read this book or of a certain author, it will make you happy or think that you are prepared for the bar. But in actuality, it's actually lacking. Uh, kasi pag binasa mo yung libro ni Dean Tan, uh, ni Attorney Tan, iba eh. You can see the flow of the process or the remedial process, which is again, is very, very important. Without the process, you cannot really exert the, the other substantive law like uh, yung kanina, yung uh, criminal or how, you, how will you enforce the writ of kalikasan. So, natuwa ako na meron na naman bagong libro si Dintan. And Dintan, I was listening to your ano, yung about the interpleader and foreclosure because that's my work as a clerk of court ng RTC-OCC. So, tuwa ako kasi may naalaman na naman ako sa inyong bago. Na, na dadagdaga. So again, uh, for the barristers, I implore you to read this book kasi napaka-importante niya. It will not make you happy but it will really guide you on how to answer and how to grasp the maze of remedial law. Sa ibang book kasi makikita mo lang siya parang straightforward na sina may sinasabi lang siya pero ito hindi yung maze magiging stair siya tapos makikita mo kung paano mo ma-apply yung, yung mga rules na sinasabi ni Dean Tan. And then again, what will your knowledge of substantive law be kung hindi mo alam ang uh, remedial law or how to enforce the substantive law? And for the lawyers, may gali. What Dean said was actually true. When I first passed about uh, three years ago, Three long years ago, uh, it was a very, very small law firm in Makati. Dalawa lang kami. And then, uh, pinapunta ka agad ako ng boss ko for a uh, hearing. And the hearing was actually, uh, mabigat na hearing yun eh. Parang uh, presentation of evidence kagad. So I need to, I need to do a cross-examination. Thankful ako nandun sa libro ni Dean na medyo memorized ko. Tapos nakita ko, yun din yung gamit ng judge. So sabi ko, ah, ayos to. <laughs> so yung judge, parang ah, ang galing akala niya senior lawyer ako yung pala hindi. Kasi na, ano, ba bakit ko daw alam yung mga, yung mga hindi alam ng ibang lawyers? Kasi sabi ko, nabasa ko judge yung ginagamit. So, imagine yung libro ni Dean, nandun mismo sa judge's table. So I'm very, very happy. And please, please kindly update your, sa mga lawyers, please update your remedial law kasi medyo Medyo, I'm sorry, pero ang daming lacking sa iba nating mga ano, eh, lalo na sa si jurisdiction. The jurisdiction is one of the most important things. And again, yung sinasabi kanina ni Dean Tan, actually I was just reviewing a complaint a while ago about the writ of preliminary attachment. And then yung ano, yung sa interpreter sa real property, sabi ko, kawawa yung kliyente. Kasi uh, again, uh, the court is passive wala akong choice kung hindi tanggapin. Pero sabi ko, kawawa yung kliyente dito. I, I know for a fact na madidismiss lang yung kaso because of that jurisdictional problem. Uh, so then again, please, I implore you to buy the book of Dean Tan. Uh, isa, pa, isa pa ito, out of context. Uh, when I was invited by Dean Tan to uh, give a testimony last night, Minuv ko talaga lahat yung mga schedule ko eh para makapag-testify lang ako sa libro ni Dean Tan. Kasi ang ganda talaga. It really helped me. Uh, 
I wish I could say the name of my professor kasi napaka very powerful niya kay Paso. Hindi ko masabi. Wala talaga ako natandaan sa tinuro niya. Pero nung si Dinta niya nagturo, ang galing. Hanggang ngayon, daladala ko pa. I really hate remedial law. I really hate it. But when Din, when I met Dinta, I became, I learned how to love remedial law. And I never for my life that I would imagine that I'll be working na ang trabaho nakafocus sa remedial law. Na kaya tuwan-tuwa ako, tuwan-tuwa sa akin yung mga yung mga judges. Actually, yung mga judges sa akin na nagtatanong eh. Kasi ako yung executive clerk of court ng RTC OCC Cavite City. So, yung limang judges sa akin lahat nagtatanong. Even yung, yung Supreme Court sa akin dumidiretso, hindi na sa judge eh. Kasi nga, because of this, uh, yung procedure sa akin na binadaan lahat. So again, Dintan, uh, without this book, I would not be here without your teaching. I think I'm not going to be a lawyer. Uh, Dintan, thank you. Uh, if you need me to testify for another book, I would gladly. Kasi ginagamit ko talaga siya. In fact, every time na piniprint ako sa Supreme Court kung anong libro yung pwede mong kunin, tuwan-tuwa ako, pinapakita ko kay Dintan. Dintan, your book has been chosen again by the Supreme Court as a guide for the courts. Sabi ko, tuntuwa ako kasi ilang books lang yung ginagamit na Supreme Court eh. So again, Dintan, congratulations and I hope your student uh, will learn from this and also the new lawyers and again, the old lawyers po. Uh, thank you again, Rex, for uh, harboring Dintan as in one of your uh, uh, publishing house. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Victor. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you for all these kind words, Victor Austria. Hearing your praises of the book gives us utmost pride for having been chosen and entrusted with the publication of this masterpiece. In the same vein, allow us to express our gratitude to you as well for being stewards of legal education. All right, now we're opening the floor for our question and answer portion with our author, Dean Ferdinand A. Tan. So feel free to comment your questions below. We will be selecting three questions from the comments. And as we move forward, I will be reading the questions in behalf of our author. All right, Dean, we have our first question. Yes. Uh, what are your tips for aspiring writers? Aspiring writers. Uh, if you're if you are intending to write something, or even a low books, low books rather, you should have a goal. You should have a your primary objective. So it should be for the purpose of helping the other the others, not for your own you know uh, self. To uplift your uh, na portfolio, but again, it should be for the benefit of other people, and you will see the happiness and the uh, satisfaction that you're going to feel. If you're going also to make a uh, write a book, make him capital H the center of your what. Well, writings. Always ask for guidance. And that is really very important. So all those who believe in him will not get lost. Yun lang po yun. So again, yung greater good should also be your paramount consideration, not for your own self. I uh, just like uh, other, other practitioners or students, I also have, I am also a victim of a book which presents a uh, a topic or a code, but it does not what have a recall on my mind. So that is the reason why I promise myself if I'm going to be a professor, if I'm going to write a book, I will make sure that the one who read it will have a comprehension or an reading. Okay. So, tignan mo po na po na yun. Ano yung iyong, uh, uh, what is your uh, objective? What is your purpose in writing the said book or articles or what? That is the first. And put 
the good the uh, welfare of other people the good writings or books shall i say okay all right thank you dean that question was from ron abs okay um we have our second question dean from okay. sheila Bainyo andrina Hi, Dean Attorney Tan. Is your new book has the same format that the way you lecture to us, the remedial academicus? Because I like very much the pattern and or the way you lecture po kasi, you made remedial law easy and lovable as we listen to your lectures, Dean. Thank you. Po. Yes, po, ma'am. The, uh, the pattern is the codal, the correlations, the discussion, and case law. Kailangan po, you should know the relation of one provision to the others so that you have a better understanding. As I mentioned earlier, before I started, uh, before the, uh, during the lecture or during the uh, uh, insights, uh, you should have a holistic approach for each and every topic or for each and every provision. Okay, I'll give you an example. Meron pong search warrant. May relation po yan sa constitutional provision under Section 2. Meron po yan relation sa Rule 126 under Rules and Criminal Procedure. Meron po yan relation sa Rules and Evidence with respect to admissibility. The book is the same way I lectured in the Bar Review, but with more details. No, kasi ang Bar Review po is medyo kung ano lang yung importante at possible that will be asked in the bar exam. But if you're going to read the book, rest assured, you will uh, you know, learn a lot from it. Especially if you pass the bar exam, you can even use it after the oath taking if you're going to uh, apply for your job as a practicing lawyer. Okay? All right, thank you, Dean. Do we have any more questions from our viewers? Feel free to comment your questions below. This is your chance to ask Dean Tan if you have any questions or clarifications about the book. Any questions? Dean, we have another question, Pa. Yes. From S. Jennifer Reyes. Hi, Dean. May we again have a short summary of the section of the MTC? Thank you so much. Uh, MTC, as far as the amendments, under Section 33, Yung title to possession under second paragraph, uh, before 2050, 20,000 or assessed value you know, involving title to possession or interest over real property. You know, and that is under the old law, under BP 129, assessed value 20 outside of Metro Manila, 50 within Metro Manila. Yun po yun dati. But now, under the new, road, new law, under 11.576, that is already 400, regardless whether it is outside or within Metro Manila. Pag nag-exit po yun, regional trial court, pag hindi nag-exit, yan po yung MTC or MCTC. That is the first. Yung pong tinatawag na admiralty or maritime cases, or admiralty or maritime claims or cases, 2 million na po yun. Before, it's, it is only 300 and 400 outside or within Metro Manila. Kapag nag-exceed, RTC. Pag hindi nag-exceed, that is MTC or MCTC. But now, with 11.576, that is 2 million. If it exceeds, therefore, regional trial court. Pag hindi po nag-exceed, then there, therefore, that is MC, MTC or MCTC. Yung tinatawag na probate proceeding, whether testate or intestate, under paragraph 3. No? I think that is paragraph 4 of BP 129 of section 19. No? That's the 300, 400 outside or within Metro Manila. If you exceed regional trial court, if not, you, you, don't, you do not exceed. Therefore, that is MTC, MCTC. But now it is already 2 million pesos. 
wala na pong outside or within Metro Manila. And the last one is that uh, recovery of money or property, 2 million pesos. If it is for recovery of money, that is uh, exclusive of uh, interest, damages, cost of litigations, and attorney's fees. So the main principal action or the amount of the principal action will be the one to be determined for purposes of what? Determining jurisdiction. 2 million pesos regardless of whether it is outside or within Metro Manila. With the advent of this 11576, definitely maapektuhan yung tinatawag na small claim cases. Sooner or later, the Supreme Court will what make the amendatory rules regarding the jurisdiction in small claim cases. Also, with respect to uh, all other claims except probate proceeding, when the amount of the claim does not exceed 100 or 200,000 pesos, no, uh, regarding uh, rules of summary procedure. So, may magiging epekto po yun. So, let us wait for the amendment of the rules on small claim cases and under the rules on uh, summary procedure, 1991 rules of summary procedure. Okay, yun po yun. Yun po yung bago ngayon, as a matter of fact. So, kapag uh, sumasagot po kayo sa bar o sa mga excuse, examination, BP129 as amended. Nagay niyo po doon. Or, BP129 as amended by 11576. If the question refers to those provisions. Okay, para po maganda yung presentation nyo. Again, this is just a tip for all those who are going to take the exam, bar examination or students. Make a good impression doon sa examiner or your professor. If you will be able to make a good impression, you will are creating or you are help you are helping the professor or the bar examiner to help you. That is one. If you will make a good impression on your answers, you are creating a bias in the minds of your professor or in the minds of the examiner. Then you will get a high grade. Make it impressive. No, hindi na estudyante, yung parang abogado ka na kung sumagot. And that is what is required for those who are applying for to be a member of the bar. You should a sound or you should write as if the one writing is a lawyer. Parang ganun ang dating. So that you will create doon sa mind ng examiner, ah, magaling itong bata to. This, this, uh, Examining is really good. So, hindi kailangan bumagsak to. And you will see, you will get a high grade as far as remedial law is concerned. Okay? Meron pa po ba tanong? Thank you, Dean. Um, we have one more question from okay. Gian Palad. Mm, Hi, she, po. Was, she was my student before. Ah, okay, bro. Gian. Um, she said po, Hi po, Dean Attorney Tan. Ano po message nyo para sa mga bar reviewees ng Best Bar Ever? Ganito yan. Okay? Don't quit. Just move on. Try to be yourself. Okay? And I know that you're going to uh, surpass all those hurdles during the bar exam. Sabi nga nila, Ang barista, susuka, pero hindi susuko. Tandaan mo yan, Gian. And you will see, if you pass the bar exam, maalala mo yun. Don't quit. Just do your best. So after your exam, just trust him that he will help you. And everything will be fine. Hey, okay, Gian? Meron pang, uh, meron pang concerns? All right. Um, and I think that's the end of our question and answer portion. Dean, mm, once yes. again, thank you very much, Dean Ferdinand Eitan. And once again, congratulations po. Thank you very much. Po. So can I leave already or what? Uh, you may stay po because we, we still have a raffle. Oh, okay. Sige. I will be just uh, be here. All right. Thank you, Dean. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you, Ren. All right. This time, as promised, we will now be giving away one of this new book. 
Who will be the lucky one to win the book Civil Procedure, a guide for the bench and the bar, book three, by our beloved author, Dean Ferdinand A. Tan. Again, reminder, we will be announcing the name of the lucky person for this raffle will. If your name is called, please, please comment down present so we know you're here with us. We will then verify if it's you who won. However, if it's after 30 seconds, we did not see any comment, we will be drawing another winner winner from our list of registrants. So, good luck! All right, congratulations to Grace Janisho. Once again, congratulations to Grace Janisho. Grace, if you're here with us today, can we comment present in the comment section below so we can verify you. We will be giving you 30 seconds to comment present. Once again, congratulations to Ms. Grace Janisho. All right, unfortunately, Ms. Grace was unable to come in present in the comment section. So our representative from Rex will be um, drawing another winner. Can we spin the wheel? Congratulations to Alexa Ask This. Once again, congratulations to Alexa Ask This. Ms. Alexa, if you're here with us today, can we comment present? Don't miss your chance. Comment present in the comment section in order for you to win Dean Tan's new. We will be giving you 30 seconds to comment present. Once again, congratulations to Alexa Ask This. All right, congratulations, Alexa Asdis. You have won a copy of Dean Tan's new book entitled Civil Procedure, A Guide for the Man the Bar, Book 3. So a Rex representative will be sending you an email regarding details on how to claim your prize. Once again, congratulations to Alexa Asdis. On that note, we have come to the end of this afternoon's program. Indeed, it was a very productive learning afternoon with our legal luminaries, Dean and Dean, and our distinguished. In behalf of Rex Education, I would like to express our heartfelt gratitude for having been chosen as your partner in legal education. Look forward to more years of our fruitful partnership as we continue to work together to the law students achieve their dreams and becoming lawyers and excelling as one. To everyone who joined us this afternoon, thank you for learning with us and for choosing Rex to be your partner in learning. See you all in our next book launch and lecture. Thank you and keep soaring, Edu Campions.